We welcome each one out tonight. We're glad for the group from Hartwell, Georgia. We'll be they'll be li listening. We'll be listening to them singing some songs uh, early later. Uh, but for tonight's scripture reading, uh, I was let's turn to Psalms 100. <clears throat> Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. We can rest assured that uh, God, regardless of what we go through, God is good, and he has the best in mind for each one of us, and uh, he will not allow us to be tempted above what we are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape. Let's pause for a word of prayer. Lord, we come before you just now. We thank you for this evening, and we pray your blessing, your presence be here. Father, that as they sing to us and as they uh, talk, Father, that your name would be lifted up and be glorified. Father, may all things be done as unto you and not to man. And Father, may you receive the honor and glory. We pray that your spirit would uh, be among each one of us and that the presence of your Holy Ghost would be here with us. And thank you for living among us and thank you for giving your life as a ransom for each one of us. You loved us so much that you were willing to give your life, shed your precious blood so that we could be set free. Thank you for all you've done and keep us, we pray, through Christ. Amen. Uh, the Church of God in Christ Mennonite is going to present us with a program in song and singing. So we'll turn it over to y'all.
The Return of the Light The sun had risen and the sun had set. Some were pleased with the work of the day and some were displeased. There were those who had blueprinted the next drama or the next book or the next skyscraper. Many had fulfilled the lust of the heart. Some were angry and some were elated. There were those who had, in a measure, satisfied their greed. Even greater bribery was being planned for the next day. There were those who had taken the wedding vows and those who had broken them. Many had entertained the crowd with hilarity, and here and there was the one who endeavored to bring the few who had gathered to sobriety. The criminal, who, the criminal was planning his next crime. Countless thousands were amused by the comedy or the violence or the lewd scene on the TV screen. Many had fallen asleep watching the show, unaware of the swishing of the sickle. It seemed that hearts everywhere had entertained evil for so long that thoughts of vice and greed, violence and pride, were the only thoughts they could think. When you singers have sung your last anthem, and you preachers have said your last prayer, when the people have heard their last sermon, and the singing has died on the air, when the Bible Yeah. 
Here and there, few are watching and waiting. Some remembered the Lord saying, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. These few had observed strange happenings in the sky. They had felt tremors deep in the earth. Those at the side of the sea heard strange roarings in the waters. A report of the day claimed that nations were distressed by the perplexity of unsolved problems. Some warned, warned of impending doom, but none gave heed. Suddenly, there appeared an unidentified point of light in the northwest sky. Its origin and source were unknown. Its approaching speed was many times the speed of light. Its pure, <clears throat> clear light revealed no elements of its existence. The only thing certain about this light was that it was on a direct course to the planet Earth. It seemed that the universe was holding its breath and fearfully awaiting the light's encounter with Earth. The signs in the heavens became more vivid. The tremors in the earth became more noticeable. The sea became more and more restless. The very air seemed to breathe an uncanny and unnatural vapor, which caused the lights of heaven to have a strange aurora. Fear gripped everything that was living. Presently, the light became as bright as the noonday sun. Then, it completely enveloped the earth with its white, dazzling light. 
There was no darkness anywhere. There fell not a shadow in which to hide. The white, clear light seemed to penetrate the earth itself. It was indescribably majestic and brilliant in its intensity. Within its character, the light revealed both an infinite love and a profound wrath. Nothing and nobody in the whole universe could escape its scrutiny. Everything would now bend to its might. Not only was the light bright and brilliant, but it also seemed to be the very essence of life and power. This power took complete control of everything. No one moved without the authorization of the light. Everyone seemed to know that this light was indeed the light of the world, the same light that gave light to the world at the creation. Someone, <clears throat> some remembered the words of the one who said, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. All seemed to sense that presently the light would translate into a being that not only would be seen, but also would be felt by every human being. In a moment of time, all activity on this globe ceased. All enterprises came to a standstill. Every schedule and every appointment was automatically canceled. The whole world ground to a halt. All vehicles came to a stop. All communication was disrupted. An eerie quiet settled upon the earth. Not a whisper was heard. Not a movement was seen. All activity ceased and all timely purposes suddenly became oblivious. The quiet lasted for about half an hour. Everything was mute with fear. The last great day.
Then a sound, as of a thousand of trumpets, broke through the clouds and tore into the earth. The earth shook and heaved at its seams. Huge fissures opened. Mountains trembled and collapsed upon themselves. The moon and stars disintegrated and fell into the oceans with a thunderous roar. A dark cloud formed, but yet the light remained. Day could not be distinguished from night. Hours could not be divided into minutes. Time stood still. And now another fearful and terrifying thing was happening. Graves began to break open. The dead were now exposed. Suddenly, a great shout came through the clouds as the light that covered the earth presented a brilliant figure. The figure appeared, so dazzling and bright, so all-pervading and powerful, so commanding, that all fell on their knees. Immediately, their eyes were compelled to look at the all-powerful being in the air. By his indisputable power, all were drawn into the presence of the almighty light. A few went forward with glad shouts of anticipation. Many were forced to move forward only by the sheer power of that great light. These cried and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The vast plain filled with people from every land. They seemed to be more spirit than body, and yet the body held the spirit in somewhat translucent form. These bodies were re readily recognized by each other. They were identified by their earthly physical features. Even more, the spirits of these bodies were recognized by the spirits of other bodies. They were soon known because the spirit that had ruled each life. To the background thunder of the mountains falling and heavenly meters tearing into the earth, the people continued to come. Some viewed the heavenly being with deep love and devotion. Others looked on him and made desperate attempts to look away, but the power of that one held their gaze. They covered their faces, but their hands were torn away by the power of that light.
The judgment hall, hall now set in motion was not an elaborate courtroom made of brick and wood. Whether it was a hall contained in the infinity of a spirit world. It was here in the infinite eye of the great light could perceive the most distant movement and his ears could hear the most distant sound. In this hall, nothing was left to guess or chance. All spirits were now totally exposed. No longer could flesh, blood, or pretense camouflage a spirit or even a thought. Every spirit in the great hall became the essence of the soul and body of its earthly life. The spirit that motivated its earth life was now the core of its spirit life. Often spirits recognized another spirit as a friend or neighbor or family member. All timely enterprise and incidents were forgotten. Only the incidents bearing on eternity were vivid in the memory. There was now no distinction between the great and the small, the rich and the poor. King and prince stood on the same plane as the serf. Free men and the slave could not be distinguished one from another. There were now no handicapped or crippled. The young and old were in the same station. All bodies that had become spirits shed all infirmities. All social differences had vanished. Someday you'll stand at the great hall either trembled with indescribable fear or with unspeakable joy as almighty light took his position at the head of the vast throng all knew that each would become an angel or a devil eternity had already begun to some it seemed as a thousand years to others but a moment as a judge swept over the continents then over the cities then and then the individual the word to the right to the left were repeated hundreds and thousands of times. The powerful words of the judge carried to the farthest corner. Each time the voice was heard, it brought the next soul a step closer to the light and its own judgment. In terms of timely measurement, this court could have lasted a hundred years, or a thousand, or a million. In terms of eternity, there was no awareness of the passage of time. Before the judge, there were volumes of books. The judge opened the books to read names. As a name was read, that person was swept into the presence of the great light. That light penetrated to the very heart of each. As from these books, the deeds of life were read. If the deeds were good, that one was swept into the wondrous kingdom of light. If the deeds were evil, that soul was cast into the vast lake of fire. As the gate to that lake was open, screams and groans were heard from the infernal depths. <clears throat> So 
The last of the books were closed, the last of the names had been read, the last reward was given, and the last sentence issued. The doors of time had been closed, never to be opened. The events of time were eternally sealed. No alterations, no changes, and no opportunities. The judge took the faithful into his everlasting kingdom. The gate to that kingdom was closed. Many came to the gate to plead for entrance. A voice from within said, Depart from me, I know you not. These terrifying words echoed out into an endless, dark night. These words will haunt the unsaved forever and forever. Last night as I was sleeping, this dream came to me. I dreamed about the end of time, about eternity. I saw a million sinners fall on their face to pray. The sin sadly shook his head. All souls are in their eternal habitat by the choices they made in their lifetime. The region of light has closed its doors to the outer dark world. Never again will any darkness find entrance. All the wounds and hurts of sins shall never be forgotten.
Tonight we stand closer than ever before to the threshold of eternity. It is the devil's game to dull our senses to the reality and finality of this great event. Let us examine our hearts. Are we ready to meet God? Today is the day of grace. Now is the time to prepare.
what we do with Jesus. What will we do with Jesus? We were given, presented the two ways. It's up to each one of us what we're going to do with this, what we heard. Thank you, group, for coming and sharing. It's been, it was as good as it was four weeks ago. We were over there four weeks ago at their church, and they give this program, and I felt that it was something we needed here, so... Thank you all so much for coming. Do y'all know that? It must be love. Would y'all sing that? Do you know how it begins? Okay. think of the great love that our Lord and Savior had for each one of us. While we were yet sinners, he was willing to give his life, shed his precious blood, so that we could be someday be set free. The choice is ours. Thank you so much for coming. Is there any announcements here in the group? Okay, the youth are invited, and y'all will be coming up there too, so. Okay, let's close with prayer. Lord, we come to before you this evening at the close of this service. Thank you for visiting us, and Father, for the group sharing your love to us. Father, we have a choice to make. What will we do with Jesus? Father, you are interceding for each one of us. You're pleading our cause, and one day you will be our judge. You're our high priest right now, interceding for us. And Father, when the books of life are open, will we, our name be written there. Help us to diligently seek and, and search and do what we can, what we, what we, we need to do for your glory. We pray this through Christ. Amen.